Hi everyone! In this video we're going to learn how to classify differential equations and it's important to know how to classify them because we use different approaches for solving different types of differential equations. So it's important to recognize them. And the first classification is by type. So there are two types of differential equations. We have ordinary differential equations or in short ORDE and partial differential equations PDE. And when you hear partial differential equations, you probably can guess that these are going to be equations that involve partial derivatives. Remember, we use partial derivatives for functions that have more than one independent variable. And there is no restrictions on how many dependent variables we can have. And the other type, again, is ordinary differential equations. And I would just say, well, if equation is not partial differential equation, it's going to be ordinary differential equations. So the ordinary differential equations will always have just one independent variable. To practice, we're going to use the following six examples. Let's go over these examples and decide if we're looking at the ordinary or partial differential equation. Now, the partial differential equations are well, even easier to spot. Remember, partial derivatives have special notation, and that is that curly D, the way I called it in my previous video. And I can see one equation here with that curly D, and it's equation E. On the top, it's always dependent variable, and it's U. But on the bottom, it's always independent variable. And notice how there are two independent variables here, X and Y. So equation E is definitely a partial differential equation. By the way, at this point, it would be good if you stop the video, and try to answer this question yourself and then resume the video so you can check your answers and i'm going to continue so do we see other equations here with partial derivative of notation no i don't see any other curly d's so they must be all ordinary differential equations um in equation a i can see a y prime first derivative Equation C, I actually recognize we just worked with it in the previous video, right? It's um, again involves two first derivatives. Equation B has dy dx, so that is the first derivative. Now, equation D, I am not sure about, so I'm going to skip it for now. Now, equation E, what does it involve? It has the second derivative and the first derivative, so that's also just an ordinary differential equation. How about equation D? I don't see neither Lagrange's notation, where we use prime, or Leibniz's notation, where it's dy dx notation. But what I see is dx over here, and then dy is over here. Well, dx and dy are called differentials. And what we can do with them to put equation in a form where we recognize the derivative. We can divide each term of this equation on both sides, by the differential dx. And this is what we're going to obtain. Well, it's the same equation, we just manipulated it a little bit, but now we can see clearly dy dx, we can see that it's a first derivative, so we're looking at the ordinary differential equation. It does not have any partial derivatives involved, right? So Next, we're going to learn how to classify differential equations by order. And it's pretty simple. You just have to look at the equation, find derivative with the highest order, and the order corresponds to the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative. This is what we say, the order of the derivative. So you have to find derivative with the highest order, and that's going to be the order of the equation itself. Let's go back to the same examples um, that we just looked at, but now we're going to classify them again in terms of order. At this point, you would want to stop this video and try it yourself and then check your answers. Let's look at equation A. Here I only can see one derivative, and it's y prime, it's here, and it's the first derivative, right? One. That means that we're looking at the first order differential equation. How about equation B? Where is the derivative in equation B? Well, derivative is dy dx. That's the derivative, and it's the first derivative, and it's the only derivative. So it's also going to be a first-order equation. How about equation C? 
I can see y prime, that's the first derivative, and I can see another y prime. So the first derivative is the highest derivative that's present in this equation. Remember the superscript 3 is just the power. So since the highest order of the present derivatives is 1, equation itself is the first order equation. Now equation d is also a first order differential equation because derivative here is dy dx, first order derivative. Now equation e is also first order differential equation because, well, here we have partial derivatives. They're both first order partial derivatives. And then finally equation e. In equation e we have two derivatives. We have first order and the second order derivative. So the highest order is 2 and that determines the order of the equation. So equation e is going to be the second order differential equation. And finally, we're going to learn how to classify differential equations by linearity. So differential equation can be linear or nonlinear. In which case we say that differential equation is linear. There are two conditions. The first condition is the following. All derivatives in the equation and all dependent variables, well, it's usually variable y, have to be raised to the first power. And the second condition is that each coefficient depends on only the independent variable x. We haven't talked about the coefficients of the differential equations yet, so let's look at the examples and I'll show you. Let's look at the example a. Oh, and by the way, I didn't say what doesn't mean for differential equation to be nonlinear. Well, and it's simple. Either equation is linear or nonlinear. So if those two conditions are satisfied, it means that it's linear. And if one of them is not satisfied, well, then the equation is nonlinear. Simple like that. So let's go back to the equation a and let's verify both conditions. So for condition one, we can see that derivative and variable y are both raised to the first power. So check, the first condition is satisfied. And the second condition, once again, it's, it's asked that each coefficient depends on only the independent variable x. Now, how do we find coefficients? Coefficients are going to be numbers or expressions that stand in front of the derivative or dependent variable y. So in front of the first derivative, we just have 1, right, the invisible 1. And in front of y, we have 2x. So that is going to be the coefficient, 2x. And as we can see, it depends on the independent variable x. So here only x is present. That's good. It means that this equation satisfies both conditions and it's a linear differential equation. Let's try it with equation b. The first condition, power of each derivative and dependent variable y should be 1. Now, derivative dy dx is indeed raised to the first power. However, as we look at y, we can see that it's raised to the power, well, it's power 1 half, right? Square root is the same as power 1 half. So that means that the first condition is not satisfied in this case. And automatically, we conclude that, that this is a nonlinear differential equation. Next, equation C. Let's check the first condition. So we have the first derivative raised to the third power. Right away, we can see how the first condition is not satisfied, and we conclude that this is a nonlinear equation. Equation D. Let's check derivatives and variable y um, in regard to the powers. Okay, derivative dy dx is raised to the first power. Y over here is raised to the first power. That's good. The first condition is satisfied. Let's move on to the second condition. Each coefficient should only involve independent variable x or a constant. Now, what are the coefficients here? The coefficient of y is 2x. Okay, it depends on x. It's good. But then coefficient of the derivative is expression x squared plus 2y. Notice that this expression involves y. So this coefficient not only depends on x, but it also depends on y. This means that the second condition is violated in this case. 
So this equation is nonlinear. Now I'm not going to go into much details with this partial differential equation. I'm going to say that it's linear. I just want to point out that the properties described here for linear equations refer to the ordinary linear equations. Extending this to the partial differential equation, we just have to again check that all derivatives and dependent variable is raised to the first power. Well, in this case, these are first derivatives in the equation and they're raised to the first power. And the dependent variable is u. It's right here and it is raised to the uh, first power. And if we look at the coefficients x and y in this case, well, they are independent variables. But let's switch to the last equation, that's e. Let's check the first condition. So here we have the second derivative and it's raised to the first power, right? Remember this superscript 2 does not represent the power, it represents second derivative. So second derivative raised to the first power, good. First derivative raised to the first power. Just dependent variable y raised to the first power. Okay, first condition, first property is satisfied. Second, each coefficient should only involve x or a constant. And as we can see here, all coefficients are just the constants. So we can say that this is a linear differential equation. So now you know how to classify differential equations. And as you move on with the study of differential equations, you will see that the approaches that we use for solving equations will depend on the type of the equation that we're working with.